Hey, 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 everyone. It's Dr. Tamar Beckford with Your Caring Dogs. That's right. And this is our Dog Soup Cares show. Woo. All right. So excited. Now, we're talking about money. Yep. Money, 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 money. Today, I'm taking you back to school. And you're like, really? Yes. And for those who actually haven't been to med school, that's where you're heading today. We are heading to the money med school. So I am going to introduce my wonderful lady doc here, and you will understand why we're going to take you back to school. But this is exciting school. Yes, this part is exciting. <laughs> we're going over things that you're like, I need to know this, man. Yes. Alrighty. So let me bring our wonderful doc in, in our Your Karen Docs fashion. This wonderful doctor friend of mine, now she's my friend, and I'll tell you why. So she is a graduate of SUNY Downstate College of Medicine. That's right. For all my New York people, stand up NY. Yes, all my New Yorkers. Then she took her training in residency in Philly. So that's my Philly peoples. All those people who are in Philly who know Broad Street. Yes, Broad Street. That's right. She did her training at Temple University right there, right down the street from me, who is a Jefferson. Then most of my docs, you know, they don't stop there. So she did a training in surgery. And then she's like, no, nah, that's not enough. I want to train some more. So then she took her training to the next level and did plastic surgery at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And then she said, that's not enough. I want to learn even more. So then she went and she did a fellowship in hand and microsurgery at the Washington University in St. Louis. For all of you guys, when you're like hand and microsurgery, you see when your finger gets chopped off, you know who's putting it all together? This lady right here, all those little small vessels and blood vessels, that's right. This is our lady doc. She has the training to do all of that. Now, as most of my docs, not only is she that awesome in doing her work, but then she decided to go a little further. She's like, how can I help others who might be in that financial strait? You've been stressed out. All you've been doing is working, working, working towards that degree, working towards that fellowship, working towards being able to say, yes, now I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. And then you look at your loans and then you look at how much debt you're in and you start to scream on the inside. So she says, how can I help that? So she decided to launch and she's the CEO of Physician Wealth, right? Then she started her Money Med School. So she is the founder of Money Med School, where she helps physicians put the F yeah in finance. F yeah in finance. I'm talking about the one and only Dr. Janelle Wagner. Yeah. Woo! My wonderful lady doc, how are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you for that introduction. That was so exciting. <laughs> yes, this is all you. You have done all of this so much, so much training. And then you said, you know what? I'm going to open up a school. But before we even got that far, we had the Janelle Wagner before the Dr. Wagner who said, you know what? I want to become a doctor. But when did you decide on that path? Take us back. Uh, well, I was a non-traditional student. Mm -hmm. I um, I went to film school, you know, as you do, natural. I love it. Transition Art. there. <laughs> yeah, I was really, um, I really loved photography and writing, and I wanted to combine those two. And so I went to art school, film school, and okay. then I actually worked in TV for about two years in New York. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of like, I don't know, this didn't really speak to me. And I was working really hard. I mean, you know, those shows, you're working 15 hour days, you're mm -hmm. really putting in the time and effort, but I didn't feel like I was really contributing anything to the world. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like my work was meaningful to me. And so I wanted to be doing something meaningful. And for me, that was taking care of people, helping people. And Initially, I had thought maybe I want to be a midwife and maybe I want to yeah. deliver babies and, and help women, and especially young moms, right. get started off on the right foot. 
Mm -hmm. um, with like a really, uh, you know, positive experience with the delivery. And so I became a doula and kind of did that as a volunteer for a while. Interesting. And I love. Yeah, it was, it was fun. And then um, through that whole thing, I decided, you know, maybe I just want to, I don't know, let's see if I can be a doctor. Why not? Why yeah. stop at nursing? Not that there's <laughs> anything wrong with nursing. But, right. you know, I was like, huh, maybe I'll just you know, if I had gone to nursing school, I would have still had to do six years of school because I had to go back and get that science and I had mm -hmm. to get the master's in nursing. And so all that. And I was like, well, oh, it's only a couple more years just to do medicine. <laughs> so it's just four more years. Fine. fine. We'll just do that. <laughs> and so, um, so that's what I did. And it was funny because when I got to my OB rotation as a third year medical student, I was so excited. I was like, oh, yes, yes, this is it. This is it. <laughs> yes. Let's go. And I got there and I was like, ooh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I really loved delivering babies. Like, that was the fun part. Like, I loved it when it was time for the baby to come out and you're catching it and you're like, all right, I feel like I'm catching a block of ice with, like, gloves that are, ice. <laughs> with, that are greased gloves or something. It's, like, going to shoot out. Don't drop it. You know? Yes. But, but other than that, I was like, it doesn't really speak to me. Mm. And... I realized like the idea I had of, of helping women and, you know, young moms and stuff, I could do it in another way that worked better for me. Mm -hmm. And so I remember rounding like on that rotation and it would be, you know, 5 a.m. and like the Today Show would start coming on in the patient's rooms as I would go around and I'd just feel this sense of relief, like I made it through <laughs> another call. And my advisor was a trauma surgeon and he said, you know, you might want to think about that. Like, that's not, that's not the feeling that you should be having. <laughs> I know. And I thought, well, I said, you know, really what I really loved was surgery, but I couldn't possibly do surgery because that's a five-year residency. He's like, it's one extra year. And <laughs> I was like, okay, you got me. Okay, fine. <laughs> so I, love it. I just decided, you know, I at first I thought, well, it's a little selfish of you to just do what you want to do. And I'm, then I finally realized, well, duh, I can help people best when I'm doing something that, that you use, yeah, that feels best to me, so I that see. I'll be at my best, so that I, I can see. be the best doctor. So it took me a little while to, you know, come around, but yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love it. You, I love your path and your journey because your journey is a lot of self-discovery and then acceptance of what's going on on the inside. Like, what is it that I want and how can I contribute? So it's not just the, well, I've seen everyone do it, me, you know? So it's just like, well, I went off to my passion, which is photography, you know, in the film industry and while you're doing it, you recognize that you wanted to do more and how can I have another impact? So, I mean, you're having an impact in that respect, but then you're like, how do I have another impact? And, you know, you look around and I love that you started off by, you know, as a doula, because you're like, I want to go get into this field, which I didn't take any of these science courses for. <laughs> You know, let me at least see if I truly like it. Then you step into that feel as a doula and you're you're now connecting in that sense, in that help field. And you tested it out and you realize that you like it and you're connecting and, and you're having an impact. And then you went further into it. And I love it. You're like, I'm going to be the OB extraordinaire. I'm going to deliver and I'm going to help these ladies. And then you're like, the Today Show is on, whew, my call's almost over. Not the way I should be feeling. <laughs> so it's an honest approach to the way you're feeling and an honest approach to your life. And uh, then you decide to go into surgery. You know, so you, like you said, you're done, you have done the non-traditional route, but you're doing the route in going after your passion and learning along the way what it is that you like and how the impact of what you like can help not just others, but also you, you're helping Janelle. Because what is the point of you working this hard and not being fulfilled, you know? I love it. Alrighty, so we're on to year five of surgery. 
But you didn't stop there. So tell us, how did you <laughs> move on from year five to now plastic surgeon? Well, which is additional years. Yeah. And I was the <laughs> lucky group where we were the first group to go from a two year fellowship to a three year fellowship. Mm. Yes. Just another one extra more year. year. It's like there's this one more year tagline that's going on. <laughs> yeah. The one more year one tagline more year. was also when it came to student loans, it was like, it's just one more year of just interest. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. So um, that was fun. I'm just checking my wireless. Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, I mean, in your, when you're in general surgery, you're always sort of thinking in the back of your mind, like, what do I like most? What do I want to specialize in? Mm -hmm. um, and in general surgery, there's a little bit of a bias against plastic surgery for some reason. It's sort of old school thing. I don't know why. Um, so general first, surgeon like, the surgeon? <laughs> the surgeon. Yeah, general surgeons used to not like us. I think part of it had to do with it used to be that you could do two or three years of general surgery residency and then you could leave and do plastics. Mm -hmm. So it might be that people would leave their fellowship or their residencies before they were supposed to. Ah. I don't know, but there was a little bit of a thing there. But mm -hmm. so I had it in my head like, well, you can't do plastics because they'll hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. Um, but I sort of started and I also went into it thinking like I would never want to do plastics because, you know, if I take out somebody's gallbladder, they feel better and they're not looking at their, you know, laparoscopic video going, I don't like the way you put that clip on there. It doesn't look good. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I don't need that criticism. <laughs> right. So, but after a while I started realizing like plastics is really just endlessly interesting. Mm. You don't learn a set of procedures, you learn a set of skills, and then you mm. have to apply them to different problems because everyone who needs reconstruction comes with a little bit different type of problem or Mm -hmm. A little bit different shape of the wound or depth of the wound, you know, things that are involved. And everybody needs a little bit something different. So that's what's interesting about it. It's also what's really hard about it, too, because yes. you never get the comfort of saying, well, I, I'm i just going to be doing the same exact procedure 100 times today, and then I'm going to go home. It's more right. like, ooh, I've got some, you know, really complicated reconstruction, and how am I going to do it? I need to prepare. I need to think about it. I need to Google it. I need to read about it. I need to ask my friends. I need to, you yeah. know, it's like, but I like that planning part. So I think that's what I like. Ah, wonderful. Cause now, like I, like I explained in the intro, you're doing like microvascular hand surgery, which is all the things that you can't see or not, not see that well, especially if you're over 40 with your, with your eyes. You know, so you're really doing the intricate work. So when did you think that you went from that macro mindset to that mindset of wanting to do the intricacies? Let's talk about that. It was a progression. It was sort of like, well, I'm interested in this. Well, I'm mm -hmm. interested in this. So I was interested in surgery as a medical student. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to do surgery. Well, then when I got into that, I was like, oh, I like plastics. I'm going to do that. And then mm -hmm. in plastics, I realized, hey, you can do more fellowships. <laughs> and when I first got there, I was like, I'm not doing that. I have three years of this and then I'm done. And then right. I was like, oh, but the thing is that hand is really interesting. And you get trained in hand surgery when you're in your plastics residency. And when you're board certified, you are board certified to do hand surgery. Mm -hmm. But personally, I just felt like I wanted more experience and I wanted mm -hmm. more training um, just to feel comfortable with some of the more complicated, like complex wrist. Right. arthroscopy, those sorts of things that you do, but you don't do enough to get really comfortable. So um, yeah, I, I was like, hmm, that's really interesting. I'm going to do that. <laughs> it was just led to like, it was just following my interests as they went. Um, I love it. Alrighty. So now we're here, right? We've gone along the path and then we're seeing this other thing that's trailing behind us. What's that? Those loans. There they go. Like, hey, Janelle. And there goes those interests. Hi, how are you? So now you've decided that I'm going to delve into that. 
and, uh, you know, also help others to delve into. When did you make that decision? And how did you go about that mindset of getting over looking at that paper with those zeros? Oh, absolutely. Mindset is the number one thing that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. I think, so I was in attending, I think I'd been attending for about three years by the time I could finally face it. And Mm -hmm. part of that is just that, you know, when you graduate, you've got to do your boards, you've got to do, and I also had a baby. So, Mm -hmm. and I got married. So there were a whole bunch of other things that were kind of taking my time and, and energy. And also as a new attending, you're sitting there going, Oh, well, I'm the one who has to make the decisions. Decisions, now. So absolutely. It's a big transition. And absolutely. it took me a little while to get comfortable. So then um, I, when I graduated, I hired a financial advisor because I thought, well, I don't know anything about money mm-hmm. and I don't trust myself to like figure it out or keep on top of it. So mm-hmm. isn't that what they do? I just didn't even think about doing it myself because I thought, well, that's just what you do, you just hire a financial advisor. That's what everybody else does. So the question was more, who do I hire? And less like, how could I do this on my own? Mm -hmm. And so I hired this guy and I call him Bartholomew. It's not his real name. (laughs) (laughs) The name has been changed. (laughs) His name has been changed um, to, you know, protect the innocent. Innocent. Um, (laughs) mm -hmm. But, you know, he helped me in some ways. He helped me by getting my account set up, my retirement account set up and, you know, an automatic savings set up, things like that, that I wouldn't have done on my own. Mm -hmm. But then when I started to learn about it, I started to realize, well, the investments that he picked are kind of expensive for me and they're actually not performing that well. Mm. And the way I first got interested in it was I don't know how this happened, but I got some email invitation to a webinar on options trading. I've never heard of it. I didn't know what it was. And I was like, well, how about, I don't know. We'll just watch it. I don't know. looks kind of interesting. And it was this guy talking about how you can use your money to make more money (laughs) by trading. Now, you know, trading's not for everyone. Trading is a very specific skill set that when you learn how to do it, you can do it. So, I, you know, you're not going to just jump in there and do that right. without learning, but it just really piqued my interest. And so then I started learning about options trading, which got me interested in learning about stock trading, which got me interested in learning about the stock market. And as I learned more and more, I started thinking, hey, wait a minute, what am I invested in? What does, mm-hmm. you know, Bart have me invested in here? So I started looking at it and I was like, well, <laughs> Now, I know I'm a newbie, right? But However. if we compare this investment to the S&P 500, which is like a benchmark we compare most investments to, mm-hmm. the S&P graph's going up that way. <laughs> and my dog the investment is going down that way. Going so we're going in two different directions here. So I'm really not sure this is a good investment for me. Right. So. You know, when I asked him about it, I got a lot of like, blah, 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 blah. Look at this slide. Look at this. Do you, you know, you know, just a lot of talking without really saying anything Mm -hmm. and kind of designed to just confuse me until I stopped asking questions type thing. Uh And I was like, well, all right. I think I can, now that I understand it, I think I can do it on my own. And Mm -hmm. it's so simple. It's like, you don't need all these fancy mutual funds and all this stuff. You just need, you know, simple index funds that cover broad parts of the market. And and it's just like, once you get those basic principles, you're like, oh, okay. So I was paying someone 2% of all of my money every year to do what I can just do myself in about five minutes here. I'm going to do that. (laughs) So that's how that started. And as I got comfortable looking at that, I got comfortable looking at my loans. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, because I'm like really old, (laughs) when I graduated medical school in 2005, so at that time, all the loans were different. At that time, um, your loans had like um, variable interest rates Mm -hmm. and when we graduated in 05, we were kind of lucky in that the economy wasn't doing so great 
And so we got the opportunity to lock in. Like lock it in, yeah, I think at the 2.5%. Yes. yes, yes, so we consolidated at yes. the 2.5. And now those yes. are old Stafford loans. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they did not have these income-driven or income driven repayment plans, like repay and pay. Mm -hmm. So at the time, like if I wanted to start paying on my student loans while I was in residency, I couldn't afford it. It was... <laughs> It was a thousand over a thousand dollars a month, you know. Month. So yeah, I just put them on forbearance. They had special forbearance pr plan called residency forbearance for your student loans, and I felt lucky. I was like, "Ooh, shoot! Good Ooh. thing we've got that." Thank and, God. <laughs> right? And now I look at it, and I'm like, "Wow!" I would never recommend someone in this day and age putting your loans on forbearance for ten years because surprise, at the end of your forbearance, when it comes time to repay them, mm -hmm. they capitalize all that interest. So, and, and so I didn't even know what that was. Mm. It's when they take all of the interest you earned on that loan and they add it to the principal. And I only found that out. This is like, I mean, I only share this because I'm sure we all have stories where we're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I was today years old when I realized. When I found <laughs> out. I know. Blah, blah, and blah. And that's so important that you're sharing this because, as you mentioned, the pathway, the financial pathway for most of us in medical school is you take the loan out, you don't think about it. Then you're about to graduate and they say, hey, guess what? This is coming. You're in residency. You can't afford to pay it. So then you do either deferred or forbearance. And then what you do, you don't think about it. Then you finally finish your training and then it comes back into play. But you finish your training and life is like coming at you fast, just like the Snickers bar. Life comes at you hard. Yes, it's, it is. So you're either starting a family because you put it off for so long and you're like, woo, thank you that my eggs are still viable <laughs> if you're a female. <laughs> and you start, you know, you start your family you start like you're starting as an attending and that was a great point that you made the box stops here so now when you're working as an attendant it's not easy a first year you're questioning yourself did i do the right thing am i you know thinking about this the right way you're really trying to get your foot on solid ground and those loans are still like hey you know sitting there and if you think about, if you've never thought about your finances and how to repay these loans, and you're in a field where you're, even though you've been working in that field, you've been working as a trainee, so someone else had the final decision. Now it's your turn. And then now you have to also learn about where you are financially, because it's not something that you can just go in. And that's why a lot of us Im immediately take that step, like you said, which is just get a financial advisor, let them do it so that I can continue with this other part of my life, because I'm juggling being a new attending. I'm juggling with a little kid, or I'm juggling with all these other aspects. This financial part is just a little bit too much. It's going to throw me over the edge. I think I pretty much summed up my life, but this is about you. <laughs> I think you've summed up all of our lives because that's exactly how I felt too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, you're overwhelmed and you're just like, oh, I'll just have someone else do it because isn't that what they do? Absolutely. But what we don't realize is that, you know, not everyone goes into their career to help people. Mm -hmm. We go into our career to help people. But other people go into their careers for different reasons, and they don't have to help you. They mm -hmm. can help themselves. And it's not, I don't say that to be accusatory. I just say it so that, you know, we understand that the other people make decisions based on what's better for them and maybe not as better for you, mm -hmm. as good for you. Right. You know, like a classic example and i'm not they're not unethical decisions they're just sort of here's an example a financial advisor makes money by one of the ways they can make money is by selling disability insurance and other insurance products mm -hmm. and so if they're selling you a disability policy they'll sell you one that's got every bell and whistle known to man and it's like very expensive and 
what they'll say to you is, I have access to compare all the different companies and I don't have any predilection towards one company. So that's why I'm like so helpful to you because I can see all their rates and get you the best rate. Mm -hmm. And that's true. However, they leave out the part where it's like, I'll get you the best rate on the most expensive policy because I put <laughs> every single expensive rider on there mm -hmm. that you may or may not need. And you know, we don't always know to look for that. So is that is that unethical? No, but is it in your best interest? Maybe not, because you're probably overpaying for some things that you don't need. So mm -hmm. things like that, where, you know, as physicians, we'd be like, well, psh, I'm not going to give my patient all this stuff. They don't need all that. They only need this. So I'm just going to do that because that's how you do it. That's the right thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit different approach. I love it. So now when you're in the money med school, we're here with you. What are some of the things that you're able to help us physicians who are just kind of overwhelmed? Oh my gosh. The first step after I've gotten over the mindset that I'm in so much debt, I can now look at my statement. Ah! <laughs> so let's go. Let's go over what we're going over in Money Med School so that we can understand how important it is for us to take back control of this and bite off the pie a little piece at a time until we can have our full pie complete. <laughs> well, the goal of Money Med School is to get as many physicians to financial wellness as possible because financial wellness really is a huge component of personal wellness. Absolutely. When you're having anxiety and discomfort about your financial situation, it's always kind of simmering there in the background and you never really feel, you know, happy or free. And mm -hmm. especially with that debt, it can feel like a real weight or it can feel like you're trapped. Absolutely. So in money med school, the first priority is to get your mindset into a positive money mindset mm -hmm. so that you can approach these things because each topic I think has its own way of getting to you and like pushing your buttons. Yes. Um, especially debt. And so, you know, we start with money mindset and then we go to um, working on your cash flow. And when I say that, I don't mean in budgeting. I don't really believe in budgeting and expense tracking because I think it's like a colossal waste of time. <laughs> if you start with that, you're like, I can't do this. I hate this. Mm -hmm. I'm never doing this again. Um, just knowing where your cash flow is, your eyes and nose. Mm -hmm. Um and then speaking we, like a true doctor, I know, right? Now your eyes and nose. So did you drink water and did you pee today? That's so, all. <laughs> so where's your money? your money? Do you need a salt tab or do you need like a bolus? Where are we going with this? Bolus. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't want to, you know, give people these nightmare flashbacks to intern year when you had to go around and write down all the eyes and O's for, yes. you know, from the night before. But yeah, you want to know where your money is. Absolutely. Uh, and then we go through debt strategy mm -hmm. and um, investing. And at the very end, protecting your wealth. So you learn the basics just mm -hmm. so you feel comfortable and confident. And mm -hmm. once you see how simple it is, you're kind of like, okay, that's all I really need to know. It's high yield only. Right. But the most important thing is not learning the information. The most important thing is actually using the information and putting action to it. Right. And I think when we read books or we read blogs or we take a course, it's very easy to just feel like, oh, I did something. I, I well, you book. feel accomplished because yeah. that's how you've been trained. You've completed exactly. here's your certificate. I did it. I'm done. And then later it's like, but wait a minute. Did I actually open that IRA? Oh, I read about it. I know what I'm supposed to do, but did I do it? And you kind of forget mm -hmm. about that part because yes. that's the part that's hard. That's the part that your money mm -hmm. mindset stuff comes up. And that's mm -hmm. the part that um, you, where you get stuck. So in money med school, it's about how to take action. And part of that is with group support by, with other students and with mm -hmm. me and mm -hmm. we meet every month. But uh, part of it too, is just having a really solid plan for doing that because Absolutely. the main core of the program is a money management system. It's mm -hmm. like a peripheral brain and it runs for you. So, you know, when you learn and you do the course and the program, you get it set up and then your system's up and running for you. So you can, you know, I don't know, have a full-time job and like have your money working for you. For you? And you know where it is. Oh. <laughs> you know it's working for you. You know your debt is getting taken care of, but you don't really have to think about it too much. It's yeah. just kind of 
it's just kind of running there for you. So that's the, that's how it works. And, uh, it. you know, I just, you know, my goal is really just like get physician financial wellness because as doctors, we don't take good care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm the first to admit, like, I think it's been six months it took me to schedule my mammogram. You know what I mean? I had to push yeah. like two buttons. Like, I don't know why. But um, it's the like it's really just taking accountability. It's it's a challenge. It's a human response. You know, it's a and it occurs in all aspects of our lives. And especially if it's hard. Like your finances, it's easier to just go along and just, yeah, it's there. Well, how much of it is there? Don't know. Sort of. I don't know. Well, Lights how are still far on. That are you? Really far? Well, what numbers? Really far? The thing <laughs> the is very that abstract words. You but, know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say it's it's just challenging for us to really look our debts in the eye. I'm thinking. I'm and, and right now I'm channel. I'm channeling an, an old western, looking that dead in the eye. And really <laughs> taking control. It's challenging for us. Go ahead, Dr. Wagner. It me. is challenging. But, you know, I really encourage everyone to think about debt in a different way. Mm -hmm. We're used to thinking about debt as like, oh, it's a burden. Um, or I'm so, you know, resent. I'm so angry and resentful of how much money I had to take out to go through medical school. So there's like mm -hmm. anger and resentment. It's a burden. Absolutely. It it can feel like a weight on your shoulders, like a physical sensation. It can feel mm -hmm. like you're trapped. Like, well, oh, I yeah. have to do this one particular job and I don't have any options because it's the only way I can pay my debt. Absolutely. So it's a number of things, but mm -hmm. I encourage everyone to look at debt a different way, which is debt is a tool. Mm -hmm. That's it. Debt is mm -hmm. a tool. It's a tool that I use to buy money to let me do things that I want to do right now as opposed to in the future when I save for it. So, mm -hmm. for example, debt is a tool that I use to invest, to, to buy an education, to mm -hmm. invest in myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I did that because it's going to pay off in spades like throughout my life. And when I think of it that way, that resentment goes away, that, you know, weight goes away. It's like, it's a yeah. gift, really. I was mm -hmm. lucky to have this tool. Now, <laughs> I'm almost glad that I never read those promissory notes or had any clue what I was doing, because if I had really thought, wow, I'm taking over $200,000 worth of debt out, and that's going to multiply into, oh, uh, I might not have done it. But right. um, so ignorance was a little bit of bliss back then. But I think we can go into it with our eyes open, knowing how it works and also feeling good about it because all you're doing is you're using the tool of debt to purchase an education mm -hmm. that is an investment that's going to, in yourself, that's going to pay off not only for you, but for your family, for your patients, for all the people that you help, for your friends and for your community. Because truly, the more wealth that you grow, the more you can use it to help other people. That's the more true. you can give. The more Absolutely. you have, the more abundant you feel about money, mm -hmm. the more you can give back. It's not a bad thing to be wealthy. Absolutely. You know, not everybody has to be like, you know, what's that, Wolf of Wall Street to get wealthy. Yeah. Or know? Scrooge McDuck, either way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's um, money is just energy. And yeah. it's energy that flows in and out and it's just kind of how you manage it. And um, yeah, so debt does not have to be a horrible thing. It can, yeah. it's just a tool. It's just it's a, a tool, tool that you are using to invest in yourself. I love it. Just thinking about it in that term, it's a tool to invest in yourself so that you are able to help not just yourself, because it goes beyond you, right? When you're helped, you're helping your family, helping your community, and you give back. So wealth allows you to give back. So being wealthy is not 
horrible things. It's not a horrible thing. Being wealthy allows you to do more for not just yourself, but also for others. Wonderful. So now talking about doing for yourself. Okay, we're bringing it back here now, doctor. What are you doing for self-care? I mean, we've been training for a long time. What are we doing for self-care? Well, I have a garden. So I live in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I live in the, in the city, but down the street, three blocks down the street, we have a, a huge community park and there is a community garden there. So oh, me and my it. mom have a plot there and she actually initially got it to when my kid was little, she's mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, kids need to dig in the dirt. So I'm like, all right. So we have lots of dirt he can dig in. <laughs> but then I really just loved doing it. So every year, we've had it for four years now. Mm-hmm. So every year we do a little bit more. And this year I've decided I really want to make a cut flower garden. So yeah. I've got all – I like pulled up all the brick paths, rearranged it, made it all cute – redid all the border bricks. Um, and then, so we're going to have all these different flowers, like really fancy stuff that I didn't know I could actually grow, but like dahlias oh. and, um, oh, I'm forgetting the other one. Those fancy flowers you see where you're like, where it's like this big and you're like, what is that flower? You know? Yeah. And that's what those are. So there's dahlias and uh, ranunculus and, Ooh peonies and roses and then I got tons of seeds that I started out on my balcony with Mm -hmm. the little like in a little seed tray with the little lid and I had to hold myself back from putting a portable garden uh greenhouse on the roof (laughs) (laughs) the only thing that kept me from doing it was like I'm it's gonna blow away like there's no way to hold it no way yes it's gonna be down the street somewhere (laughs) it will and then I'm going to be like, I don't know what that is. Ooh, Not- oh, man, whose garden is oh, that? I got wow. that? How did <laughs> And so I love to garden. That's my happy place. But I would also say something that's really important that I never paid any attention to uh-huh. until lately is sleep. Like, Oh, yes. I know it's so <laughs> obvious, but. Because you never got that much of it. No. When yeah. you were trained for mm-hmm. years and years that it's normal to not sleep every third night. And Mm -hmm. like when you're burning the candle at both ends so you can have a life and you're like, Ooh, I got three hours on call. I got three hours of sleep when I was on call. That's like a full night, you know? Yes. You just don't realize how important it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's important. And so now I'm just protecting it. And I'd say the number one way I do that is by forcing myself to not get on the phone. I will not let myself be scrolling after like nine. I'm like, no, no, you have, cause I'm like, if you pick that up, you're not going to put it down. Don't kid mm-hmm. yourself. Nope. <laughs> you nope. pick that phone up an hour later, you're still going to be awake. And that's an yeah. hour. And, it, and that hour later feels like it was 20 minutes until yeah. you really check and see it's been one hour. Absolutely. So I love it. Protecting your time, recognizing how important sleep is. Ooh. I know it sounds Woman so boring, but I'm like, sleep is so yes, important. sleep is so important, and it's something that we often forget and we neglect. But she reminds us, okay, you're not going to be super functional if you don't give me some time. So it's very, 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 very important to us. All righty, so now I'm at my fun question of the day that I ask all my doctors. So if you weren't a doctor or working in the film industry as because you already did that what would you be (laughs) i would be a gardener who takes photography uh flower portraits and and probably watercolor as well Ah, painting you painting yeah i love watercolor i love doing it i don't think i'm any good at it but i recently heard this phrase question (laughs) i heard this phrase hey you don't have to be any good at your hobbies. Exactly. And it was liberating. I was like, I don't. You mean I could just do that because I think it's fun and it doesn't matter if it looks good or anybody ever. Who cares? It's like, Absolutely. that's so true. Yes. I love that liberating true. idea. You don't have to be any good at your hobbies. Hmm. Yes. Because I cannot sing to save my life. 
But hey, so no, I will not be in the choir. But I'm a great singer in the shower. School. Oh, yeah. I'm really good in the car. Ah. Especially when there's no uh, witnesses. <laughs> I hit all the notes when no one is around. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. So photography, I think that you are my second photographer who, um, doctor, um, my gardener, you are among some of my wonderful gardeners on um, Dr. Edie Allen loves to garden. He is, um, anesthesiology pain management, Dr. Shiri, um, Shard. She likes to garden too. And who else did I have? I have a lot of wonderful docs who likes gardening. Yeah, from all over. So there are a handful of, of gardeners. So you are, oh, did I just made a pun? I said it's a handful. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> There's some of our wonderful doctors who do love gardening. And I think like you said, it, they, it's relaxing. It really clears the mind. And you have something to produce at the end. So it, it's a wonderful tool that's used for self-care. So I love it. Now we are coming to the end of our wonderful interview and people are listening, they're watching and they're like, you know what? She's right. She's right. She's right about those loans. She's right that I ignored it. She's right that I have no idea what's going on. And I really need to get a grasp on things. Where can I find this doctor? So go ahead and let them know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at moneymedschool.com. Mm -hmm. Also on Instagram at Money Med School or Facebook at Money Med School mm -hmm. and YouTube at youtube.com slash the lower case C mm -hmm. slash Money Med School. Love it. Love it. And you have this wonderful video out there about that loan repayment. Go out there, watch it. She breaks it down. All down, all down. And so if you are there and you have been or if you are in that position you've been ignoring your loans because you're just afraid to really tackle the process then we have money med school that's available for you right there to help you get over that mind get into learning these process and getting into learning a process where you can put together your loans, get them repaid, and actually live a life and get the F yeah into your finances, right? So Dr. Janelle Wagner, thank you so much for coming on and being a part of our Docs Who Cares. We're helping woo, to really bring that finances to the face of us, to bring it up to our face, actually, and letting us know that it's not as scary as we might think. Really, once we tackle that in mind, and uh, we tackle the fear, we're actually out in the clear. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is there any last words that you have for our wonderful audience? Just that, you know, money is fun when you start seeing it grow. <laughs> when hey. you start seeing your money work for you and grow, mm -hmm. then it's fun. Then the fun begins. Mm -hmm. So that we are, so we get the F year. So we're gonna deal with the finances and then you get to the part of the fun, fun, fun. Thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Alrighty, everyone, as usual, you know we had such great information. Dr. Wagner stopped by, she dropped a lot of gems. So I need you to let her know how much you care about this wonderful episode and leave her a five-star review. Go out there and let her know that you do not mind tackling that big bad wolf and having fun and watching your money grow. All of you guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>